Yo, 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 it's been some time, right? It's been, we, we, I've been away for some time, right? And, uh, mainly because I was at the seaside and, um, it was hard, man. It was hard to be at the sports camp with four workouts per day and watch WWE, watch AEW, do a video, edit the video, all that good stuff. I made it for one video, but I just couldn't handle it. Uh, and when I came back, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I cannot do, 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 anyway. And I basically just watched one week without doing anything. Uh, but now we're back and I'm here to talk about the things I have missed. Basically, I have watched Raw today and this video is about all the things I have missed from Raw for the past two weeks, three weeks, whatever. The first thing I want to talk about is the new team uh, between Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler that seems to have a good future, but I kind of have a problem with it. See, we were building Shayna to have a, a singles run and all of a sudden she's again in the tag team division. Why we did break her with Ronda Rousey then? Like she would have had way more significant run when, with Ronda Rousey than with Zoe Stark. And on top of that, why did we have that whole feud? What, like Shayna was complaining that she's in the shadow of Ronda Rousey and all of that stuff. And now she's going back into the tag team division, like being with a partner and all of that stuff. Um, but even though this is happening, I'm really excited because I have a lot of faith in Zoe Stark and I feel like Zoe Stark plus Shayna Baszler is gonna work tremendously. Unfortunately, Nia Jax came back and this is interfering a little bit with Rhea Ripley and her championship. Uh, but yeah, Nia Jax is back and the whole locker room is on notice. Uh, last week she attacked Rhea Ripley after her match with Raquel Rodriguez. Actually, she interfered the match and basically she caused Raquel her, uh, the title. Uh, this week uh, she caused Shayna and Zoe Stark the titles. Uh, so basically Nia Jax is back. We have a new team between Shayna and Zoe Stark and Rhea Ripley is injured and I'm really excited to see what is gonna happen when she's gonna come back. Either is she gonna go after Nia Jax or She's gonna choose another opponent. I'm not entirely sure, but exciting times are ahead of us in the women's Raw locker room. Next up, the whole Chad versus Gunther versus Tommaso versus Big Bronson Reed. Let's say I haven't covered the last part of the Gunther versus Chad Gable. All I want to say is that it was awesome. I think everyone saw that it was awesome. It was like six star match, eight stars, ma 10 stars match. I don't even know what kind of match. It was really awesome. And we really saw that Chad is gonna be the one that is gonna dethrone, dethrone Gunther. But unfortunately, uh, Chad cannot have another match right off the bat. And I feel like they're gonna build up a little bit of, uh, now Chad, you cannot have a match but Tommaso is gonna have a match. And after that, Tommaso will fail and Bronson will have a match or whatever. And eventually Chad is gonna get back to Gunther and he's gonna dethrone him and it's gonna be really feel good moment. Um, but I feel like this is gonna be the right move because Chad really deserves the title and it's gonna be amazing. Uh, as we saw, he can really deliver a good match. He can deliver a good story, uh, even Yesterday, he was having a match with Bing Bronson Reed and it was just perfect. Uh, the only thing that I missed this match was a Big Bang Catastrophe, I think, was his move. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy him doing it on a big guy. It's really satisfying, but he didn't do it. He even lost. So, yeah. Excited to see Chad being a champion in the future. 
I'm really excited to see how chat is gonna go all the way back to the intercontinental championship picture. Right now we are having Tommaso and Bronson Reed uh, just beating their opponents in order to get uh, a match with Gunther. And yeah, uh, I really want next week to come because Tommaso Ciampa is gonna have a match with Ludwig Kaiser and basically if he wins that match he's gonna have a match with Gunther probably but um, yeah I'm gonna wait for next week to see what's gonna happen but as I said in the beginning Chad is gonna be the guy and I'm looking forward to see that rise of Chad Gable the great he's not the great he's Thank you, Shush guy, and yeah. Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura is a feud that I never expected to be so good. Like, their, their fight at Backlash was super satisfying. Like, I'm not talking about the fight itself. It was just the story of the injury of Seth and all of the anime stuff that Shinsuke come up with and the whole thing. And after Backlash, it continues. And it evolves and it uh, becomes even better because Shinsuke is now playing in his territory like uh, he's in the head of Set, and Set is so angry and he's trying to deal with Shinsuke but Shinsuke is just running away and he's just playing with him and it was so good. I, I really enjoy the story. I really enjoy also that they put Ricochet in the picture as well. I hope that this will help him in the future to be more credible for the title opportunity. But anyway, I'm really excited because, of course, that whole thing will lead to Seth versus Shinsuke at the next pay-per-view. I'm not sure if Shinsuke is ready for the title yet, but at some point Shinsuke gotta win the title, I feel like, and if they do three matches maybe on the third match Shinsuke is gonna win I think I have said it in the past that they should make a trilogy and maybe Shinsuke should win the third match but for now the story is satisfying the feud is satisfying the matches are satisfying it doesn't matter if it's Seth versus Shinsuke Shinsuke versus Ricochet they're all good and uh, I'm really excited how everything will build up towards the pay-per-view. Last but not least, Jey Uso is back. Jey Uso is back on Raw. And uh, I was a little bit upset when he came back at Backlash and Cody was like, I put all my chips down and I returned Jey Uso to Raw. And I was like, he quit WWE. And two weeks later, you're saying that you magically made him appear back on Raw. Like, do you, do you know what quit means? Like, everyone knew that it is a kayfabe quit, of course, but just play along with it a little bit more, like, make it more believable. But anyway, uh, Jey Uso is back on Raw, and uh, by the looks of it, no one likes him except Sami Zayn, and uh, Cody Rhodes, um, only these two gentlemen have his back, Kevin Owens doesn't like him, Drew McIntyre just had a match with him, and I feel like he's liking him now, and he's kinda okay with him, but he cannot forget what happened at Clash at the Castle, at Survivor Series a few years back, and I think he's gonna get there, and also, man, what is happening with the Judgment Day, why they all of a sudden decide to recruit Jey Uso, don't they realize that if Jey joins the Judgment Day he's gonna look like an emo, this is not a good marketing Judgment Day, just get over it, but anyway Jey Uso declined the offer, he super kicked all of them and uh, at the end of the show Judgment Day attacked Jey Uso and Cody Rhodes helped him. I don't, to be fair with you, I don't know what is in front of Jey Uso. Um, I really want to see him be a credible solo competitor like main event Jey Uso. 
um, but I don't know what is in front of him. Uh, probably something alongside with Cody or alongside with Kevin and Sammy. But at the same time, I feel like Cody is going into a feud with Dominic. But I thought that we're not doing a feud with Dominic anymore. Uh, like we have played over it. And I kind of don't understand what exactly is going on like for Jay. Uh, I really hope they don't do something like, uh, for example, Jimmy coming to Raw or someone going to SmackDown and just go back to the bloodline shtick. Another thing that I hope does not happen and I feel like slowly it's gonna happen. I don't know why I have that feeling. That whole thing is a play for the bloodline. Like, truly... Jay is not out of the bloodline, but he played it along so that everyone can believe that he's out of the bloodline. And when no one expects Roman is gonna have that huge match and Jay is gonna appear and he's gonna save the day for Roman. Um, I really hope that does not happen, but um, we'll see. So, uh, I don't know what is happening with JD McDonough, like a few weeks back I thought that he's almost in the Judgment Day, but now he is not appearing on TV for two weeks, so I don't know what is happening right now. Uh, I just wanted to mention him because he was part of the story. He he gave Damian Priest his cool briefcase, um, and I feel like he deserves to be in the Judgment Day, uh, and that will help his character a lot as well. Like music is his music is kind of familiar with the Judgment Day style, and. Um, his style is familiar with the Judgment Day style. I want to see this happening. I want to give JD a proper chance. I want people to give JD proper sh chance and Judgment Day will give him that um, opportunity to shine, in my opinion. So, basically, that's everything that I have missed or you have missed if you're only watching my channel and not Raw and SmackDown uh, about Raw. Um, I'm gonna do long type of videos like this for SmackDown, for NXT, for AW, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Peace.